What's going on, buddy? How are you? What's going on? We are back, man. We are back. Yeah, we uh, took a week off. We had a, yeah. we had a we had a busy damn week. It was a busy week. There was a lot happening last week. It was crazy. It yeah. started started out with the uh, the premiere of Last Night at Terrace Lanes, which was a lot of fun. That was a blast, dude. That was that was so much fun. Um, you know, uh, just seeing you and, and Elias and Jack. The, you, the funny thing was is um, because Jack's one of the the killers, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, I couldn't tell you which one he was if if I my life depended on it. Yeah. And every time he popped up on screen, he'd lean over to Melissa and be like, "That was me." Oh. And I'm like, oh, "Shit, I'm over here." <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, but so, it, it looked like he had a great time though. He was really enjoying himself. So that's fantastic. He had as much fun. He had as much fun hanging out with uh with Wes uh Johnson afterward. Oh yeah. Um too. Then we're talking Skyrim and all these uh video game boys projects that Wes is part of and, and caps and all that. So he he had a blast. Well, good. I, I was ready to go home before he was. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh and Guess what? We're going to get more into Terrace Lanes in a little bit. That's going to be we fun. Are. Yeah. But, uh, and then a couple of nights later, we had a premiere of A Town Called Purgatory, that Western that we shot over in Austria that uh, that I produced and we went to Austria to shoot. So, yeah, you to were there. Our, to our fives of listeners out there, this movie is so freaking good. Um, you guys crushed it. I know it took a long time to get there, but um, like I said in, in my post, I'm so damn proud of you guys for the, for the, 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 the thing that you've put on the screen it's it's really really good so you should be uh cheers to you you thank should you. be so proud of that thank um, you and everyone that was there and the event was fantastic so for those of you that aren't familiar with the dc area there's a there's a theater in silver spring that used to be one of those grand old like movie cinemas you know and it, it was i guess probably got into disrepair and the american film institute came in and bought it and they made it the AFI Silver, and it is now this beautiful Art Deco, retro, yeah, Art Deco theater house. And uh, yep. we packed that place, and we had this big gala out, you know, hang uh, red carpet thing beforehand, and filled the theater, and it was just a great time. So, congratulations, man! Thank you very much. Yeah, it was it was a blast. You know, I had a blast. So many people coming up to me afterwards, congratulating me, saying how much they liked the film, and they, you know, they want to know if they can see it again and get their friends yeah. to see it and we may do another screening uh yeah of course not with all the you know the pomp and circumstance of you know uh, of course but um we may do that we may do another screening here soon and have a little q a afterwards which we didn't do this time but yeah it'd be good to do a little q a so but anyway dan we need to get to it man we, we got to get to the guest waiting here that we're we're looking forward to talking to so uh I, we have a theme song should we go to that first i think we should let's go to the theme song Let's do that. Take it, Jeremy. Apple teenies with Ken. Apple teenies with Ken. Oh, yeah. Apple teenies with Ken. Oh, 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 oh. Apple teenies with Ken. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Apple teenies with Ken. Apple teenies with Ken. Oh, yeah. And we're back. You know, it is so good. And what did Jamie say? What did Jamie say? The theme song's better than the podcast. The theme so. song is better than the podcast. He's not wrong. <laughs> he is not wrong at all, by far. Truth hurt, but it's truth. Um, <laughs> truth is the truth. Our guest this week is the star of the new hit horror film, The Last Night at Terrace Lanes. You may also know her from the as the co-star of the Disney Channel's Dog with a Blog, as Young Lily on How I Met Your Mother, as the voice of Charlie Brown's favorite little redhead girl in the Peanuts movie, and as Ellie in the series Crown Lake. Welcome to the show, Francesca Capaldi. All right, Hi. there. All right. There you are. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, you know, yeah, we're great. You know, we we had such a busy week last week, which of course you were a part of at the beginning of the week, yeah. which was uh, which was great. Uh, so congratulations to you on the premiere of Last Night at Terrace Lanes. Thank you so much, and same to you. Thank you. Congrats to both of you. It was it, the movie was so much fun. I've I've been telling people it's like the, you know, when we were growing up in the '90s, '80s, '90s, and and the new Freddy would come out, and we'd go to Blockbuster and get it on the on tape, and we'd get pizza, and we'd go back to someone's house, and everyone would sit around. That's what this movie is like. It's the kind that you're going to get together with a bunch of friends and. Uh, and just be stupid and laugh and, and enjoy. So it's it's a good, it's a real good time. 
So, Francesca, uh, a quick question about the uh, the film last night at Terrace Lanes. What was it like to work with the guy who played your dad? <laughs> it was amazing. Um, highlight of the entire experience for sure. Um, but yeah, no, it was actually such an amazing time to get to know everybody and to get to kind of come together over that really, really fast paced, like three weeks that we shot it. It was mm -hmm. a great time. Well, cool, because, you know, I'm going to Ven Venmo that money I promised you for saying that. Oh, yes. Yeah, thank so. you. I was actually, you want me to put it in the chat, or do you already have the Venmo? Or? Uh, no, yeah, can you put it in the chat for me, please? Because, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'll totally forget, because I'm that age. I forget about everything at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so, go ahead, Dan. I, I know Dan has had a bunch of questions he's been wanting to ask you. So, uh, go ahead, Dan. Okay. Fire away. Okay. We had Jamie on the podcast previously, and he was talking about how the the project came together. And like you said, it was it was shot over 12, 14 days, something like that. And um, so the, the bowling alley, I guess, was going out of business. They had a chance to shoot there. And, and Jamie said before he even came on board, they had the treatment and he said they had the actress attached to it. So I'm just curious kind of how that happened. Like there was no script yet. And, and how what being in L.A., what's yeah. what? Oh, no, I was just going to say, yeah, there was no script. I kind of, Carlo reached out to me, said, we have this, uh, you know, idea for a film. We have you in mind. Um, here's a treatment. We have a bowling alley that's being torn down. So we have to work quickly. You know, would this be something of interest to you? And I read the treatment and I was like, this sounds super cool. Nothing like I've, I've ever done before. And I said, when you have the script, you know, send it to me. And um, I read the script and thought it was such a fun role and would be such a fun part to take on. And I was like, sign me up. That's fantastic. And we were, we were yeah. sitting here trying to figure out what it was. Like, here you are in California and uh, Frederick, Maryland. Where do you find a map? <laughs> Where the hell is that, right? So um, it, was curious. it was curious to me how you ended up just sight unseen saying, yeah, I'm interested. So, Yeah, I mean, it sounded like such a fun opportunity that you know, I jumped at the chance to do something so different and gory and, um, you know, such a fun plot. Did you get to do anything in Frederick? Did you get to see the town at all or? Yeah, we went around uh, a bit. We went to, you know, the downtown, went to some restaurants that were super fun and then kind of ventured out even more to like D.C. And, you know, I have family in Pennsylvania and Delaware. So we headed up there. So, yeah. You see that, Dan? Pennsylvania and Delaware. You see that. I, that's, I was, why, I, that's why I told you. Eagles fan. There it is oh right yeah. there. I saw on your Instagram at one point, you, you said, uh, my first stop when I get back to the East Coast is always Wawa. And I was like, you have oh, great yeah. taste in coffee and horrible taste in football teams, but I won't hold that against you. So, Well, um, yeah, no, I always go. We get um, some coffee and soft pretzels and, you know, Hell yeah. do it. Those pretzels yeah. are the best. You know, when, when I was a kid, though, Francesca, you know where we used to get the pretzels? Where? Uh, on the side of the road from the guy selling them at the corner when you would pull up to a street <laughs> light. Yeah, but we stopped doing that when we saw the guy come walking from around a tree and he was buckling up his pants like he just had gone to the and he came over and he was like, what do you want? You want a pretzel? We were like, no, thank you. We're good. <laughs> so much. That was the last that was the last time we ever got soft pretzels ever from a street vendor. We were like, you know what? That's enough. Not not doing that again. So yeah, I'm glad Wawa has them now so I can get them at the Wawa. Yeah, no, the Wawa ones are really good too. <laughs> They're amazing. They are. They're amazing. In the film, you know, you and I, we get to do a lot of cool things. We get to do, uh, you know, fight scenes. We get, uh, tell us a little bit about that one fight scene where you got to fight a bowling pin. Yeah, that was super, super fun. I When I was reading the script, that scene immediately stuck out to me as as something that I was going to be really excited to get to do. And, um, you know, working with the stunt coordinators, we didn't really have a lot of time to plan it or I say choreograph. I don't know if that's the correct technical term, but to choreograph the fight scene. Mm -hmm. And um, they're like, well, you know, the guy's going to be in a bowling pin and, you know, he's going to come up, he's going to strangle you. You have to fight him. And, and they were like, just really, you know, go at him um, with all your strength. And I was like, okay, sounds good. And it ended up being so fun. Yeah. I got to flip over the counter and it looked, you know, pretty authentic. And I got to throw bowling shoes and, 
It was such a great time. I really loved the way that scene turned out and I love doing stunts and things like that. So to be able to kind of get to do that myself was such a fun experience. Well, you, you had the opportunity to work with one of the best in the business, Dan Mascarello, better known as yeah. mascot in the industry. Yeah. Um, but he's fantastic. And the way he choreographs things, it's simple, it's easy, always safe. We love him. He's been on all of our films and we're going to work mm -hmm. with him, you know, in the future and hopefully we'll get to work with you again which would be yeah. fantastic yeah, that would be great that would yeah. be amazing uh, yeah. i loved when you were chucking the shoes and uh you know not, i don't know if everyone catches it but there's one that that went a little wide left and you nailed uh our buddy chris la martina and i went over to him after oh. the movie he's like i saw you get nailed with one of those shoes like yeah it didn't feel great <laughs> so. we actually didn't even know that until you said it right now that's hilarious yeah one of them just sails just left of the pin and just right in the back. I was like, that's awesome. But he's I mean, such a so, trooper. Yeah. I feel so bad. I had no idea. Um, yeah, I was, my mom came up and said to me, she was like, are you going to be able to like actually sell it? Because I mean, you're not very good at throwing, you know, you're not. And I was like, well, that's rude. And I was like, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to throw these bowling shoes. Like my life depends on it. Just to prove a point to you now, if not anything else. Well, I'm pretty I, sure Carson Wentz's mom said the same thing to him. You're not uh, really good at throwing. Easy, buddy. Easy about the Carson Wentz jokes. So anyway, yeah. Francesca, that that was one scene that you did. But I'll tell you the mm -hmm. one that really got, you know, because I wasn't there for that one. But I was there for the one back behind the bowling pin machines. And yeah. that fight, you know, starts out me getting beat up. And then mm -hmm. somebody comes in and saves my butt. And I... Yes, you and I got to tell you. After that, I was like, I am not going to mess around and make her angry. <laughs> so, <laughs> what was it like though, doing that scene, the the one back yeah. behind the bowling pin, the machines? That one was actually really, really fun. Um, it was a very emotional scene as well. They wanted me to kind of be uh, really crying and and kind of grappling with the weight of killing this man and and doing that. So it was kind of fun to balance both that kind of rage, anger with, um, you know, a really emotional and genuine moment of someone, you know, killing another person. Um, I think it was kind of, I don't know if it was, it, you were able to tell in the movie, but it was supposed to be a bowling ball in um, like a sling, a carrier sling. Mm -hmm. um, and they were like kept, they were saying to me you need to make it look like a bowling ball because i mean it was it was like a plastic um mm. with no weight kind of thing and i was like i'm trying to like whack this guy so i was trying to make it look like it had some weight to it um you know also kind of beat the crap out of this man and i was getting like there was like blood and kind of some like fake guts on this mannequin well first it was um it was mascot and I had to, you know, whack him in the head. And then after that, it was a kind of mannequin thing that I was on top of just absolutely, you know, demolishing. And <laughs> there was, I, I like woke up the next day and I didn't realize cause it was on like the concrete. I had bruises oh, all man. down my shins and legs. And I was like, I didn't even realize in the moment that I was like bruising myself all up. But you know, if we get the shot, that's all that matters. So. That's great. I was watching the monitor and I, I got to tell you, like mascot came over mascot was there and <laughs> Jamie was there and we're all whispering. We're like, you know, and mascot comes over and he's like, did, did you get it? And I looked at Jamie and I said, Jamie, you got it. Cause that was <laughs> phenomenal. She was in the moment. She was, and let me tell you something. You sold it that you sold that it was a bowling ball and not a light plastic thing. Yeah. I mean, when you watch the scene back, it's, it's great. It's fantastic. It's violent. It's exactly what it needs to be for the movie. And you did a fantastic job. Well done. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'd like to talk about that other scene that took place back behind the lanes. Um, you know, and I know at the at the premiere, someone called that out. Um, you mean the one with Captain Pin and that? And the, <laughs> not that <laughs> not scene, right? Not Pin. that scene. Come on, man. This isn't that I, kind of podcast, Dan. Come on. I put that out of my head. I don't want to uh, talk about that ever, ever again. again. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, thank you. <laughs> but the two of you have a great scene back there. And I do think that it's unfair of Jamie to ask you to carry the load, Francesca, and carry this guy through through such an emotional scene, you know, and, and lift all that weight, uh, you know. But um, you did a great job. No, ser seriously, though, it's, it's uh, and I think we have a clip of it here, but we... 
um, it is such a, a like grounded, sincere scene. And in the middle of all this chaos and, and, you know, there's not a lot of um, horror movies and horror comedies, especially that have a scene that, that the two characters are so like authentic and, and, and connect like that. And I think that that just kind of elevated kind of the whole movie, that, that particular scene. And, and I know the, the, the way it's shot, even, I mean, both of your performances and the way it's shot, this scene is just kind of like the, the heart of this movie. And I thought it was just beautiful work from both of you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, it, there was a, just before we got on, actually, Francesca, just so you know, there was a, uh, from Scare Value, they did a review of the film. And they talk about our relationship and how great it was and how, you know, the chemistry between you and I was fantastic. So if you get a chance, I, I shared it on uh, X and I shared it on Facebook. You get a chance to read that article. They they uh, talk about you and how well you did. And, you know, it's a great review of the film. So check that out when you get a chance. I'll have to, I'll have to look at it. All right. Um, let's go into the video clip. You guys ready? We're going to show a clip and, uh, you know, uh, let's see a uh, the uh, scene behind the bowling pin machines. This place is more than bowling. It's memories, it's birthday parties, it's late night, it's first dates. We haven't had a wedding once. That's sad. No, it was beautiful. But my point is, you can't knock down memories and put up condos. This is the only place that I've felt at home since when? Since you were a kid, I know, we all know. No, I was gonna say, The only place I felt at home since your mother left when she took you. Dad. Look, okay, I, I know that I drink too much sometimes, okay? But it's not because I'm mad at your mom. It's because I knew she was right to do it. Dad. The room here is a place to sometimes. It gets busy enough that it's just cool. And the way that that carpet smells the same way is when things were good. When you were little, when we were the lucky strikers. Yeah. Rats, rats in the walls. <laughs> there was it. I, I, it probably sounded a little low volume wise on your end, but not on my end. So the sound is 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 pretty good on this end. So. I Perfect. loved right up. You said, I know I drink too much. Yes. Poor. As, as, um, as I'm over yeah. here. And, and by the way, Francesca, you know, it is apple teenies with Ken. So we're drinking apple. Yeah. I, I, I don't have an apple teeny on hand. Mm -hmm. Um, so I can just, you know, live vicariously through you, but yeah, yes. <laughs> Thank you because we don't want to be arrested for, you know, uh, oh, right. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because, and I did love for those of you that, uh, that have, checked out the movie and please if you haven't check it out it's on it's on every streaming service it's apple amazon Tubi. i, th I think there's just i mean if, if you search it you're gonna find it but uh your your, your character introduction ken has a has an apple teeny easter egg and I, I thought that was fantastic yes it was great that and in the theater when they mentioned it the, the, you know, yeah. the whole theater was like yeah <laughs> so which was kind of cool because <laughs> I, I'm a local legend here with the Apple Teeny Show, Francesca. So, <laughs> with, our, with, our, with our fives of, of listeners, yes, we've been doing this since 2009. Believe it or not. Oh my gosh! Really? Mm -hmm. Yep, we've been doing it at, at some form. Bad podcasts in 2009. If I'm going to be completely honest with you, uh, it, originally it was a YouTube show. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's and awesome. Then, yeah, then when when uh, social media kind of blew up and they started doing live videos, we went into the live, and then um, you know podcasts are popular now, so now we do a podcast version of it. So. That's amazing. That's so that's so cool. Yeah. So we've been doing it. I used to have hair when we started this. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, oh Dan, I know you got some more questions. You sent me a whole list. So so, you know, moving into horror, like you said that this was, you got the treatment, it sounded fun, um, you know, and then most of the stuff that you've done so far has been in the family um, lane or teen lane. Um, so, so what was that? Was that a, a kind of a calculated choice or just this was, this was the lucky thing that kind of came along or, or something you wanted to do? 
Yeah, I mean, I kind of want to venture into all different areas. And so when the opportunity presented itself, I thought it was great. I mean, I wasn't, you know, actively seeking it out or anything. But when, yeah, when the opportunity arised, it was so perfect and something that, again, was so different from anything that I had done before that I was super excited to kind of see what that looks like on the back end and, you know, be able to get into that and do something with a completely different character and script and and plot line. I mean, I think, I don't know if this is rated, I think it's unrated, but you know, something with such graphic content in terms of like the gore and and just the slasher aspects of this, it was such a, such a cool project that was really exciting to work on. Awesome. Now, and it, it seemed like, um, so, and it's not very, a, a very like, in your face kind of piece of it, but it definitely felt like, um, and I've seen in other, some other reviews as well. So it wasn't just me, uh, that, that your mm-hmm. character was more interested in, in romantically possibly in the girl that was there with you as opposed yeah. to either the guys who were tagging along, but it, it right. felt like it was such a subtly like underplayed thing that to me, that made mm-hmm. it feel more, more organic or more real. And it, I don't, was that a character choice or is that something you and Jamie kind of decided this is kind of the extent that we're going to play that? Yeah, so I think in the original, the very first treatment that I received, it kind of wasn't that way. I think my character was supposed to be there on a date with um, Lucas's character. Mm -hmm. And um, that kind of changed around when I read the when I read the script. And yeah, they never kind of formally address it. But I do think that that is something that is very genuine. And, and, you know, maybe not something that that uh, Kennedy would just come right out and say. Um, so yeah, I think it was a really fun, cool element and something that, um, was just, yeah, kind of there in the undertones, but yeah. Right. Thought it played really nicely. Thank you. Thank you. It was super fun and and getting to work with uh, Mia. Um, you know, it was such a great time and kind of seeing our two characters, um, I mean, start on very different, uh, levels of emotion and then kind of at the end walk out with that um like hug kind of moment that really kind of put a nice end to everything that had happened in that night actually i was going to transition into some of the other things that you had done uh francesca Mm -hmm. in in your career you started out when you were very young Mm -hmm. obviously um and you said uh in a podcast the other night you didn't expect that so uh could you go into that a little bit uh, yeah, the, like the start of my career. Is that what you mean? Mm-hmm. Or... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. For sure. I mean, I kind of, my parents had no connections in the industry and I kind of just an agent, I don't even want to say discovered, but kind of at a restaurant. Uh, and I started doing like print, uh, and commercials and till I was about five years old. And I really liked doing that, really enjoyed it. And I kept asking my mom, you know, how can I do TV and movies? And she was like, well, I have no idea. You're just not getting those calls. And we didn't even realize that I needed a completely separate agent for that. And um, ended up getting an agent and kind of got pretty lucky right off the bat with um, Dog the Blog, which is this lovely picture that you have right here. Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> And I was so, so lucky to be on that show. I mean, it was such a fun experience and such a great kind of start to intro into the into the business. I got to work with uh, Mick, who played Stan, the dog, mm-hmm. and just such a great cast that we got to kind of all grow up together. And um, I knew that, you know, from when I started that and even before, I was like, I just love this so much. I want to do it forever. So... Yeah. So a quick question. The, the uh, agent you're talking about, was it a Philadelphia area agent that you had uh, to get started or was it somebody in L.A. or New York? It was actually someone, I think, based in San Diego. It, she was a, oh, a cool. print print model. I mean, I was very young, so the details are a little fuzzy. But yeah, yeah. she came up to my parents at a, um, at like a Japanese restaurant. I think I was like six months old and I was in my little baby carriage and thing and they said she said oh is is her hair natural and my parents were like no yeah we dye our six month old baby's hair (laughs) (laughs) um and they gave the card and they're like well if you're ever interested in you know kind of going into the film industry or whatever and my parents were like we had no um intentions of anything like that but they just thought they'd give it a try and i kind of fell in love with it and kept pushing them to do more and more and more and you know they were so nice and kind to 
help me out and take me to auditions, even though I live in San Diego and they would drive me up to LA multiple times a week, which is, you know, if, if you're not familiar with California, that's at least like a three and a half hour drive mm-hmm. there and then hours back. So it's quite the trek to be doing it multiple times a week. We, yeah. uh, you know, DC to New York is three and a half. And, and so for us, for auditions, it's the same thing. So we, we definitely, yeah. uh, we know that, we know that drive. <laughs> Yeah, we empathize, yeah. we empathize. We know. Yeah, we're there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, look at the curls in your hair right here in this picture. That, that <laughs> yes. it's fantastic. And I know my, my son mentioned it to you um, after the after the screening, but um, we, we we loved this show. We we were uh, this was kind of at the time that you know he's right around I think the same age as you, maybe a year younger. And um, so you know when we kind of moved in our house away from cartoons and and like the really young kid stuff. It was all the Disney Channel stuff, the the Good Luck Charlie and the Wizard to Waverly Place and and Dog with a Blog, and that's the stuff that we would watch together. Um, so we we loved the show. We we were definitely bummed after season three when it when it wrapped up. I know, I know. It was it was a really fun show and and something that was such a great a great time to work on. So and I always feel so um, happy when people come up to me and they're like, "Oh, you were my childhood." You know, I watched Dog with a Blog at the time, and I just. That's so like sweet to hear and nice. So it's such a great compliment. Now, did you ever get to do one of the, uh, you know, you're watching Disney Channel with the wand and do the, the promo? Yes, I did. I, there was actually a switch over in um, the like formatting of how they, how they did it. So there was like a, the original one that was like the white background with like the wand looking thing that glowed. And then they switched over to this other format and I actually got to do both, which was so fun and I, it was like a dream come true to be able to do that because I've always watched this as a kid and it was, it was so yeah. exciting. It feels like that was, that's the thing. Like I'm a Disney actor, but I got to do the thing. Like, like yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, for sure. Yeah. It's so iconic. It's so great. Annette Funicello was, a, you know, it, it, she was one of the first Disney kids. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you look back to, and now you are part of that tradition. That's fantastic. I mean, forever, that's yours and you own that. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it was so fun to do. But I have to say it was a little bit complex because how it worked was you had this like um, wooden uh, wand type thing and you would look at the camera and there was a kind of outline over to the side of the Mickey uh, ears and they're like okay don't look at the ears but trace it and you have like 10 seconds to get all this done and you have to trace it perfectly or else it's not going to look good and I was like okay I'm trying to like do it while not looking at it don't look over but it was so fun and then to be able to see it and mine was like one that it I did it and it was turned into a dog bone and then I had to like hit it and it turned into oh, yes. the Mickey ears. yeah it was- so cool. here's my question at any point did you think in your head I'm going to say expecto Patronum. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, no, at that point I had never watched Harry Potter. So that would have, that wouldn't have really. Oh, okay. Watched. I was just, I was just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I have another picture, Dan. Let me, let me bring up this other picture real quick. So there's a picture of you and me from last night at Terrace Lanes. That was a late night. Cause that was the one where we set the guy on fire. If you remember. Was that the night that it was? Mm-hmm. That I look my I've got runny makeup and frizzy hair. It's really mm-hmm. a, it's a gorgeous picture. <laughs> yeah, me too. I got runny makeup and frizzy hair. Just definitely like frizzy yeah. hair again. Absolutely. But uh, you know, uh, we were in the middle of you know doing a scene where we're screaming at the door and we're sweating and it was hot and just yeah. yeah. Of course, we had runny makeup and sweaty you know frizzy hair. Yeah, it was because you guys were shooting in like July, August, and I'm sure they had to mm-hmm. turn the AC off for sound. Like that had to be just a, a sauna in there. It was. It was. It was crazy. So we were filming, and we went out to do a car scene um, with, you know, with all of the kids. And I was like, it was like eleven, twelve p.m. or it was like twelve a.m. It was midnight, and um, I was like, oh, it's probably going to be chilly because even though in California it's hot during the day, it'll always cool down at night. Mm-mm. And they were like, Mm-mm. no, it's still like eighty-five degrees outside. And I was like, oh, it is toasty and. And we got in the car and yeah, they were like, kill the air. And I was like, beads of sweat just, you know, cascade out my face. Was- welcome to Maryland. Yeah. Welcome to the sweat box. Welcome to the sauna. <laughs> you, you know how cold it was here last week when you were here for the premiere? Yeah. It, it's, we had the windows open today. It's 65 here today. Yeah. So 
That is crazy. crazy. Yeah. And humid. And and it's humid. So that makes it even feel like yep. it's hotter. That's crazy. So All I was right. listening to the the Smartless podcast recently, not to not to plug those guys because they, they don't need help. <laughs> but yeah, um, exactly Gomez was on there and she was talking about how Disney tries to really kind of bundle talent together, like people who can sing and act. And is that something that you're that you are also a singer? And is that somewhere that you know so many Disney people have singing careers? Is that something you're interested in? Um, yeah, I actually got, I, I really, I like to sing. It was not something that I, you know, pursued as a career, haven't yet. But um, I remember when I was really young uh, and I was auditioning for the dog with the blog, I think I was about seven years old and I was in the room with the execs and this was kind of almost the last round of, of auditioning. And one of the execs said, you know, you look like Annie, sing Annie. And so, you know, I, I bursted out a rendition of tomorrow. Um, but it was, I think they wanted to, you know, make sure that I, if I, if they wanted me to sing that I, I could, and, and I do like to sing. Yeah. To answer your question, but no, I haven't, you know, uh, recorded any songs or anything like that. I'd love to sing in a movie or something like that. Yeah. Awesome. You know, I like yeah. to sing too, but every time I do, they're like, all right, get out, <laughs> get <laughs> out. Don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they do that to me too, but I just keep going. You know? uh, exactly. I mean, you got to have confidence, right, in your ability. Uh, Dan, I know you have more questions on your list, man. So just I do. keep rolling. I'm just, just leaving room for you, man. Um, All right. So I'm a big fan of How I Met Your Mother. And if I'm going to be honest, and so I'll, I'll ask the two of you if you were living in New York as a 20 something year old, the crew from Friends or the crew from How I Met Your Mother, who are you hanging out with? Oh, gosh. Wow. That's a really good question because I love both of them. Right. See, I know that I I would I would I would be I would be in forever in love with Rachel Green, but I would be hanging out at McLaren's with with Barney and <laughs> and Marshall and Lily and all those guys. I don't. Um, I, I I I've been watching How I Met Your Mother. Like my son Elias is way into it now. So yeah. who you work mm -hmm. with, of course, Ray Jessica, Elias, <laughs> and he's been watching it all day every day, and I've been watching <laughs> it with him. So yeah. uh, How I Met Your, your Mother. I, while I find the show funny and I like it, I do not like it as much as I like Friends. And okay. I would I would be with Joey and Chandler, and that's because that, I think that's where you know it, it, in the early '90s when it first started, I was in my early 20s, right? So right, yeah, yeah. That's that that, and I they feel familiar to me, you know. Uh, How I Met Your Mother's more your your range, Dan, because you're about six years, five years younger than yep. me. So yeah, I hope everyone says I'm Chandler. So my whole life, but but that's oh my gosh. yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I think probably they're to me. I think they're different. I think people always compare them, but I think I see them in two different categories. I mean, I think How I Met Your Mother has so many like real life aspects. I don't know. Like it's so hard to say. I think probably Friends because I consider myself. Like I don't know, like a coffee shop. Yeah, I would want to yeah. be like Rachel in the fashion industry, or you know, with Joey on set. I think um, so. Probably friends, but that is actually a really tough one. So, but you did get to be part of How I Met Your Mother. You played Young Lily yeah. um, toward yeah. the toward the end of the show, and you got to work mm -hmm. with uh, Chris Elliott, who, by the way, in those flashback mm -hmm. scenes, his wig and the wig you wore in. Uh, Ken's wig in the in the flashback picture from Terrace Lanes. You, it was very very similar situation there going oh, on. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see That's that? So I, I shared that picture, Francesca. Did you see how many <laughs> likes it got? It was so funny because when it came up in the, um, when it came up in the movie, like the theater kind of burst out laughing, and that was so funny, and they actually changed it from when I had seen it because weren't you taking pictures with some other girl? Yes. And then they photoshopped your face over her face. <laughs> Cause I remember they showed it to me. First of all, I think she was blonde. And second of all, I was like, she looks older than I do right now. So I have some Benjamin button kind of thing going on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or what's the deal here? <laughs> so, <laughs> Photoshopping me into it. Uh, yeah, they they did. They they said, "Hey, you're going to be taking pictures with uh, 
you know, this little girl, she's going to, you know, you're going to be uh, holding bowling trophies. And I'm like, okay, well, put this wig on. I'm like, what? what? Put a wig? What? What are, we what are we doing right now? And so we got that picture and then they showed me the final result because they had that picture on the desk in the one scene that we did. Yeah. Um, and I saw it. I started laughing then and I was like, this is going to be hysterical when they show it. And it was. It got a great laugh in the, in the screen. Yeah. But back, to, back to How I Met Your Mother. What was that experience like? And so I'm, I'm sure at that age you weren't watching the show, but were, were you familiar I, at all with it? Yeah, my mom was a huge fan of the show. My mom and dad would watch it. And so I, I mean, I was pretty young, so I just kind of saw glimpses here and there, but I knew that my mom was a huge fan of the show. And I remember when I auditioned, um, she was so excited and I was like, I don't really know what this is, but yeah, it sounds great. And, um, I went in and, and I was lucky enough to get it and working on the, on the show was so fun and getting to see the sets, you know, Clarence like half, um, open and cut off with uh you know the no wall and i my scenes were so funny you know with the with the with who, he was playing my dad and i had a the first time i was on the show twice um and the first time i was getting my tonsils removed and this was i think the episode where lily was giving birth and it was so funny to get to work with them and then i got to meet the whole cast everyone except for uh neil patrick harris i was so bummed i never got to meet him ah. um, but it was it was such a good time. And then I came back and there was a, a horse race episode where my dad is bringing me there. And I'm, I was like, you know, seven years old at the horse races. And he's asking me, you know, when's your birthday? I want to put it down as my lucky number. And I'm like, it's today. <laughs> and, and that scene was, I, I rewatched it the other night and uh, it was so funny. And and your, your timing was perfect. Like you took a beat. You're like, it's today. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Like, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was hilarious. Um, yeah, and I got to work with Pam. She was the director, and she always had me in these little braids. And she would come over and she would pull my braids like Pippi Longstocking, and it was it was so fun to get to work with them. All right, well, what was it like to work with Chris Elliott though? Because he's he's one of my you know he's one of my guys. I just love Chris Elliott. He's fantastic. It was it was so fun. Uh, he was such a, a nice guy to get to work with, and um, you know. He had worked with, um, you know, Allison, who was playing Lily, and he was like, uh, he was marveling at how much we looked alike, and he was he was just a really great guy with a really funny wig. Um, of course, which was, which was great. Yeah. Yeah, his shtick is always. I mean, his time on Shit's Creek is amazing. Well, yeah. just, oh, I, mean, I know. He's been Anything. For Thirty yeah. years, just, just. He's like one of those like the ultimate that guys, you know, because yeah. those of us who are fans know his name, but a lot of people are just like, ah, that guy. And he's great and everything. He's been around since groundhog day. And before like he was on Letterman. Know. I don't know yeah. if you remember that, but when I was in college, he was on Letterman and we used to watch Letterman every night and he would pop up and it was just like, ah, oh, it's Chris Elliott. We love Chris Elliott. But yeah, that was yeah. long before your time, kid. I'm <laughs> I, no, I, I, what you mean though, with the, that guy, like he works so much so often I'll be watching something like, Oh, it's my dad. And yeah. Yeah. yeah he's, <laughs> he's hilarious. I love him. I love him. So, yeah. so can you talk about a little bit about, um, you did three, three seasons of crown Lake on, and, and a, is that a Amazon prime show prime video? It's on prime. Now it was produced through the brat TV network. Um, okay. I think now you can get it on, I think Tubi and you can get it on YouTube and, um, prime. Mm -hmm. it, 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 yeah, so I, it's good. Feels a bit like uh you know from from the trailer um it feels a bit almost Harry Potterish with the with the the the, the book, diary yeah. that you're reading you know yeah. um it was a really fun show I was in the first two seasons um, which took place in the 90s at a boarding school um, and then the third season did a time jump up to gotcha. um, present day and uh, yeah it was a super fun. I got to work on it with you know some of my really good friends that I've known for a really long time which it's always a blast when you get to work with um, friends um, we did yeah. um, we did like the shooting process on that was so much different than, you know, it was, it was single cam. We did it in such a, we did it in a tiny little studio. We shot completely out of order. We would shoot like episode, part, part of this episode, part of that episode. And so I like remember filming and I was like, I actually have 
no idea how this is going to turn out because it's so hard to tell. We're going, you know, this we're shooting the finale and then we're going back to, you know, scene one, episode one. Um, but it was really fun. We got to do, um, we got to film it a couple, you know, we filmed in a tiny studio and then we filmed a couple um, like on location. We filmed at this haunted house, it's like a historically haunted house that like does um, haunted house tours. And it was so crazy because um, the like the bottom of the, the basement, it belonged to an orthonologist. It was a person who studies birds. Mm-hmm. And they're like, there's, they told us that there was 16,000 stuffed birds, like real uh, taxidermy birds in the basement. What? And I was like, I actually really didn't want to know that. <laughs> <that's>... no, <thank laughs> Who you. would? Who would want to know that? <laughs> but yeah, it was, I mean, we filmed at a cemetery. We filmed at a, a morgue. We were, we were all over the place. And um, it was a really fun show to film. You were back out this way last, either earlier this year or was it this year? Um, yeah. Uh, it was yeah. Well, it was, yeah. Three, uh, August of 2023. So can you talk a little a little bit about that project? Yeah, of course. It's with, you know, uh, a lot of the same uh, crew, and um, which was super fun to work with. It's called uh, A Very Stinky Summer. It's a children's film. Um, and I think the premise is that um, it's, a, it's kind of a family ensemble thing, and there's a skunk that kind of makes its way into um, – a family and kind of causes a bunch of chaos. But, um, you know, also, uh, there's a whole other, I don't know how much, you know, I'm allowed to say, but it kind of, a lot of chaos ensues in terms of like, they kind of told me when, when I was learning about the script and everything, like it's a, it's a kind of like home alone meets parent trap, um, meets, you know, uh, animal film. I don't know. I can't think of one at the gotcha. moment, but you know, it's a film with a dog or a, yes. a cat or some sort of animal. Or, 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 you know, it's something stinky. So exactly. yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So I, but you know what, Dan, didn't you have an opportunity to audition for this thing? I did. I auditioned to play your dad in that one. So oh my gosh, um, really? yeah, I had a, I had a, an audition with the whole crew over there. So that's so fun. So we could yeah, have no, we could have had you know we could have had right here we could have had a reboot of my two dads the whole the old TV show we could you know we could have like pitched that after this. <laughs> exactly. No, but it was a it was a fun thing to film. I actually was at that time. I I had been free all summer, and this was like right as kind of the SAG strike was happening, and oh, wow. and I was starting college, and so they were nice enough to kind of try and compile my scenes to be as quick as possible so I could come out to Maryland and then fly, fly home to start school. And, um, yeah, I ended up having to fly there for a week, come back to California to move myself into my dorm and then fly back for three days to film at a campground and then start school the next day when I got back. What's next? What, what what are you looking to do? I mean, I know you're in school, so you're focused on that. But anything coming up, anything you're looking to do, uh, you know, any projects you're just like, this is what I want to do come, going forward. I'm always looking for something, you know, fun and exciting to do, just auditioning at the moment. But um, I'm really hoping to kind of, I think, Ken, you and I talked about this on the other podcast, kind of mm-hmm. branch out into like some more dramatic things, maybe some thrillers, you know. I'm up for, I'm up for whatever. Okay, good. Because I don't do dramatic or, you know, I do comedic stuff. Like I produce that kind of stuff. Well, I did do the horror Western. So there is that, but yes. I, I got you in mind for some parts and some other things coming up, some horror comedy stuff. So if you want to, if you want to jump on board, just let me know and we'll write you in. Shoot me a call. Sounds great. <laughs> shoot you a call or shoot your agent a call. <laughs> <laughs> <They're what? laughs> I love that one. I call people up and like the people I've known for years, friends of mine, like uh, one of our good friends, Jimmy Bellinger. He's like, yeah, I call my agent. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. That's so funny. Yes. Yeah, so you got to do that though. When I call you up or I text you and I'm like, Hey, uh-huh. Francesca, I got the script. You know, you can just text me back. Call my agent. <laughs> yeah, man. My agent. Exactly. <laughs> Francesca, where can people find you? Yeah. You can find me on Instagram. Well, you were so kind to put it 
right here. I mean, you got um, two million followers already. I mean, we got to get to three, right? We got to get to three million. <laughs> and yeah, for the people that are for the people that are on on the audio version of this, that's just Francesca Capaldi at Francesca Capaldi on uh, Instagram. How did you get two million people? They just, I mean, they just went to you. You're just like. I think it kind of coincided with when I was on the show. I had this. My we never really intended to make a social media account for me because I was so young. But there were so many people kind of making fake accounts that right. you know my parents were like, we need to just make one, and uh, they ran it. You know my mom ran it for a really long time, um, and now it's mine. But um, yeah, it was so nice. The show had a pretty great following, so I think you know over time, just kind of. I was lucky enough to have some really, really great supporters out there. So, after this airs, uh, you'll get like yeah. a, a, a fives of tens of people from our. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, yeah, Dan, the number went down. Just so you know, <laughs> I lost seventeen thousand followers. Oh, sorry, sorry, we're sorry. It was worth it. So yes. thank you. Well, thank you. We thank you for joining us. I hope we get to work together again in the future. Uh, hopefully we will. Uh, if not with those guys out in Frederick, Maryland, I hope we get to do something else somewhere. That'd be great. Well, if you can, if you can take us out, we'll, we'll wrap yeah. it up. Yeah. And that's a wrap on Apple Teenies with Ken, Dan, and Francesca. Roll that beautiful theme song. Apple Teenies with Ken. Teenies with Ken. Oh, yeah. Apple Teenies with Ken. Ah, oh, 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 oh. Apple Teenies with Ken. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Apple Teenies with Ken. Apple Teenies with Ken. Oh, yeah.